Good morning, Seattle. Yeah. So I actually have my own laptop because I have a lot of slides. All right, so um, eight years ago, I decided to build a house from land. This is actually my house under construction. Um, so because I'm building a house under a budget, there are many people I hire, right? So there are contractors, there are roofers, there are engineers, there are designers, and uh, they don't just work for me, right? They are deployed into some many other home sites in our local area. So one of the key problem is how do we secure the communication among them because they're not dedicated to me, they're not just deployed to my house. I live in Cary, North Carolina. Uh, like, like Kaylin said, uh, I'm also uh, very active in CNCF. I'm one of the new CNCF TOC member. I'm also a CNCF ambassador. Um, the problem I would like to talk you all through is how do we secure the communication for applications running in cloud native, in Kubernetes, just like the workers are working on building my houses and many other houses in the area. So I would like to ask you all, um, how many of you travel here with a valid passport? Raise up your hands. All right, and how many of you travel here with your driver license ID? All right, awesome. So you guys have valid ID, awesome. And how many of you believe uh, security at the edge at the Kubernetes cluster is sufficient and you could potentially just run plain text inside of your cluster? How many of you believe uh, that's uh, good enough? And how many of you are doing that today? Don't be shy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, um, so uh, to me, the most important thing to secure your application communication is your application needs the pod in Kubernetes cluster, uh, using cloud native words, needs a valid identity. Um, by valid identity, remember, when you go to the post office, when you ask the US government for your passport, right, you, you, you don't just ask for the passport. You have to prove to the government who you truly are. So you might be bring your birth certificate, you might be bring um, your driver's license, and depends on your age, the US government is going to give you the passport, which is like a cryptograph graphic identifiable uh, identity to you and depends on your age. They're gonna say, if you are a kid, they only give you maybe three years, five years. If you're an adult, uh, let's give, trust you a little bit more and give you 10 years. So that's a valid identity. Prove who you truly you are is really, really important. Uh, the second point I want to touch on is confidentiality. Uh, to be able to make sure the communication between you and somebody else uh, is truly secure, where only you and the other target, uh, the peer, can understand through an encryption key uh, that's session-based. The third point is data in integrity because the data is going to transfer through the network, right? You don't want anybody may in the middle attack your data or modify your data. So you want to make sure that encrypted data stays the same. Just to touch a little bit quickly on how Mutual TLS works, which I believe is the best way to secure application communication in cloud native. Uh, in the nutshell, I really believe there are three stages. So the client and the server, they each show the other party, the peer, hey, this is my identity. Think about it as a cryptograph passport, they are present to each other and then they validate if they are valid before they can establish anything to communicate. And then the second thing they are going to do is they agree on how to encrypt the data. This is important for them to agree on because that makes sure nobody else can understand and decrypt the data. And then the third thing is before when they send the application, they use the 
encryption key to encrypt the data, and when the receiver receives the data, they decrypt the data using the encryption key. So now I would, I would like to show you a live demo, so please um, wish me good luck. And in the demo, I am going to use JavaScript to build an application for the server side. I'm going to stand up Kubernetes cluster using K3D right on my laptop. It's going to be a couple of nodes. And uh, we're going to go through a simple server. Uh, let's get started. So I'm going to show you the really simple server, which I'm sure everybody will be able to understand. Um, so as you can see, this is simple JavaScript. And in the JavaScript, uh, we kind of create a simple server to say, hey, the server is running on port 3000. And when there's a request coming, the server is going to say, hello, cloud native security car. And uh, it's running HTTP because we're doing plain text uh, initially. So we want to start with really, really simple. And uh, we have a simple Docker file which uh, builds up the, uh, the Node.js application as a Docker image. And I also have a simple, by the way, can you guys see in the back? Is the font good enough? Awesome, thank you for confirming that. I like to take care of folks in the back, making sure. Um, all right, so I have a, server, a, a service account for the server. I have a service for the server uh, running on port 3000, and I have a simple Kubernetes deployment for my server using the images I built, uh, which is called linsound slash uh, server uh, simple. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, run this in my Kubernetes cluster. By the way, I also have a Kerr client, uh, which is using the standard Kerr image, and the only thing it does is it stands up an image and it sleeps there, so that allows me to run Kerr command um, that I can use to test it. Um, sorry, I'm going to enlarge this a little bit, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, deploy uh, to my Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to deploy the server.yaml first, and here I have K3D, uh, my cluster, I'm using K9S as the UI to visualize what's going on in my cluster. As you can see, the server is trying to uh, actually just reach running, and you can see it's my node uh, server, it's running on port 3000. So let's go ahead and deploy the client. Uh, the Kerr client into the cluster. So you should be able to see the Kerr client here and uh, uh, it should be reach running. Yes, it does. All right, so let's call a simple one from client to the server, right? So this should be really simple, right? Uh, if I can type, let me actually search for it in case I couldn't remember the command. All right, uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to exact uh, the, into the Kerr client, uh, which we just deployed, and uh, we're actually going to uh, run the Kerr command. It's, we deploy in the default namespace, so I'm going to remove that namespace, and uh, um, we are going to uh, call it um, the server, and do you all remember which port the server was running? Thank you. All right, you guys are awesome. I'm going to need a lot of help, so, and uh, we don't run headers, so I'm going to remove that. Okay, does this look good? All right. All right, we got a response. Okay, hello, Cloud Native Security Cloud. So everybody knows how to do this, right? There's no magic, right? Simple client to server. This is not really what I want to show you because there's no security, right? So what I want to show you is how to do this in a hard way through a manual mutual TLS in my server and in my client. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking a surgery to my application. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is my server uh, JavaScript uh, in the manual to, uh, mutual TLS folder. So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm listening on HTTPS. Remember before we were listening on HTTP. And uh, I'm doing the same thing on same port and I'm saying the same hello message. However, when I create the server, I pass this option in and in the option, I specify the service key and service certificate and the CA uh, that the 
the peer uh, certificate that the server can trust, which is the client cert. And I also specify this important configuration called a request cert, which means I want whoever calling me, which is the client in this case, to present their certificate uh, before the communication can happen. And I also specify my pass phase. Uh, to generate uh, the key and certs, I'm going to show you the steps uh, I generated so you have an idea. So I'm not running with a true certificate authority, so I'm using self-signed certs. So basically I'm using open, uh, OpenSSL to generate the server key file, and I specify the encryption uh, module I want it to use, and then I generate uh, the server certificate signing request uh, using OpenSSL. In fact, you can actually use in this command to view um, the certificate signing request. So uh, one thing I want to importantly highlight in here, in the certificate signing request, it's important to make sure the CM matches the server, the host name of the server I'm going to deploy uh, because uh, the curl command does check for that, uh, else you have to specify specify the insecure-k option, which I'd like to avoid since we're at a security conference. Uh, and uh, um, once I get the certificate signing request, I'm going to ask OpenSSL, hey, can you generate the server certificate for me using my signing key and also my certificate signing request? And by the way, let it expire in uh, 365 days. Um, um, the, we can also uh, do a step um, through the certificate, inspect the certificate. So uh, this is the certificate generated that we're going to use. You can see uh, it's based on what I ask for, right? The, the CN name and also uh, the the expiration is like a year, almost a year from today. Uh, by the way, I generated on 21st. Um, all right, so we got our certificate. Um, on the client side, I also have to make a little bit surgery to the client because, uh, you know, I I need to be able to um, embed the key and the cert of the client into my Docker file. So basically, uh, the way I generate the server key and certs, I use the same way to generate the client key and certs, and I also put uh, client uh, cert and server certs in each other's folder so that I can specify them as a CA cert configuration so they know which peer uh, certificate to trust. Um, so this uh, client cert uh, client uh, image is based on the current image, and then I'm just adding the client and server uh, certificate and key, uh, client key in here. And the server side, I'm also adding, um I'm also adding the images, uh, the key and certs uh, through the copy command. All right, let's show this. Um, so now what we are going to do is uh, we're going to deploy the, um, the server, probably called MutualTLS server, and this is the server only speaks MutualTLS. In the meanwhile, I'm going to also deploy the curl client, uh, which is also speaks MutualTLS because it has the client and also the server uh, certificate embedded into it. So let's go to our K9S. Okay, it looks good, right? We have the client, we have the server. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, figure out the curl command uh, together. So what we are going to do is we are going to deploy into mutual tiers client, right? Um, and uh, we're going to specify, we want to talk to mutual TLS server on port 3000. Remember here, we're actually using HTTPS now. And uh, in order for the communication to succeed, I'm going to specify the key file for my client uh, certificate the client key and the certificate for my client certificate and also specify the CA cert as my server cert because that's the peer certificate I'm going to trust and I'm going to specify my pass uh, which is my name and uh, all right so we actually established mutual TLS communication from client and server in the very hard way lots of surgery on the client lots of surgery on the server so you don't have to do that because the unbelievable there is an easy way for us to navigate. So um, I'm going to show you the easy way. 
So uh, to do it the easy way, we're going to go back to the simple example we have uh, without mutual TS. Uh, so we're going to label namespace default. Who here knows how to label a namespace? Raise up your hand. I'd expect everybody knows, right? All right. Um, so we're going to label it with Istio IO data play mode ambient. So what does that mean? That means uh, we can, we want to enroll everyone in the default namespace, all the parts here uh, into uh, Istio, the new Cycolor service mesh. Um, by the way, uh, I'm going to switch to all the namespace. You can see I actually have Istio running. I wasn't using Istio in any of the previous demo, and here I'm labeling the namespace as a part of ambient. All right, so let's go back to um, our oh, uh, default namespace. Um, so you, and I'm going to generate some traffic. So we're going to call from cur client to cur server. Now you're saying I'm calling plain text, but uh, I need to prove to you I'm actually calling mutual TS. So first thing I'm going to do is launch a uh, premises dashboard. So I do have premises deployed in the monitoring namespace, and uh, I'm going to show you some of the metrics uh, premises provided for me just by adding, labeling the namespace uh, to ambient. So I'm going to specify my destination app as server. I'm going to run a premises QRM. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see in the back. So you can see the connection policy is uh, mutual TRS and the destination is my server and the client is my cur client, uh, which have a principal assigned. So you can see without taking any surgery in my client, a simple client and simple server, I have mutual TRS. And then I, I know I want to prove you more. So I prove to you on premises. I'm going to prove to you on dashboard. And the reason I want to say permissives is uh, permissives is really, really powerful, right? Because the permissives metrics allows you to generate visualization, generate a pager, and everything you can well up to it. So I'm using a Red Hat open source project called Kayali, uh, which allows me to visualize my client and server. And uh, oh, wow, this is a little bit unexpected because it's very, very small on the screen. Uh, so let me see if I can think out how to visualize it. Big, all right, I fix it. Um, so let me add a couple of things. I'm going to enable traffic animation, and I'm also going to enable the mutual TLS security badge so that you can see. So now I'm going to click on my cur client and the server. You can see um, I have traffic coming from client and server. It's mutual TLS enabled with my client and my server, which have been assigned a principal using Spiffy ID. And I even have uh, TCP metrics coming to show how much data has been sent and received. So, all right, so hopefully this demo makes sense to you. Uh, just to recap, we started with simple client and server, and then we did it a very hard way with mutual TIS client and mutual TIS server, and then we went back to uh, label the namespace and leverage the power of Cycolus of Istio service mesh to achieve mutual TIS without any change to the client and the server. Oh, one thing I do want to show uh, before I forgot is there's no sidecar, right? So my simple client and the server, it's still running uh, without any restart or any sidecar. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you guys. This is actually my house. <laughs> Imagine I was able to secure the communication without sidecar, without any surgery to any of the workers. And if you're interested to do the demo I just do, I just did, uh, feel free to scan that QR code. It would show you the repository of the demo, mutual tears the hard way. And if you have any questions, I'll be hanging out at the solo booth. Thank you so much.